And sometimes yeah. you get paid more. So, you know, don't, uh, don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> That's right. Hey, it's Walter here and you're at the Think Profit Podcast where we're going to help you develop a rock solid trading confidence and avoid the potentially endless cycle of system switching. Right, Hugh? That's right. We're going to help you develop a wealth mindset, develop a trading strategy that fits your core personality and help you overcome the obstacles that stop over 90% of traders. All right, Hugh. Sounds good. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Hugh. So we have a question, a couple of traders, a trader here that I wanted to talk about. He had some issues I think a lot of traders have. This trader says that my current challenge is that I tend to trade outside of my plan. When I see certain option strategies that look appealing, most of the times I fail to do my research on it because I take a trade on so quickly because I feel like I'm going to miss out on something. After I, and That's a key, uh -huh, I think. Mm -hmm. After I have been doing long-term research on stocks, you know, so he, he has done a lot of research on stocks, right? So he knows like a handful of stocks really well that he's comfortable with, but he doesn't trade them. <laughs> he just trades these strategies. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he just kind of jumps the gun and trades these strategies that he learns in the options. Long story short, my $1,500 account is now at $19. Having little or no money is my second biggest challenge because I've quit my job to pursue trading. So what do we say to this trader? Hmm. Okay. So pretty common scenario. Not like, uh, not something that, uh, I mean, something that happens a lot. So don't yeah. feel too bad about it. I think that you got to look into why are you doing that, right? Why are you, why are you jumping the gun? Why are you not researching something? Um, it's like, would you take a job at a company and not know anything about how to do the job? Of course not, right? You get fired the first day, but when we're in control, it's a lot easier to say, oh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I think um, it just comes down to, you got to treat it like a job and you got to treat it like um, a business and, um, I think that it's tough for people to do that because not everybody's brought up that way. Everybody's brought up in the school system where you're told what to do and you're told how to act and how to behave. And there's just, there's really no incentive for initiative, right? Like to take your own initiative and to do something, it's always like follow what's going on. So I think in this case, you, number one, you just have to take responsibility for the results. Uh, and then number two, treat the backtesting process like it was essential because it, it basically is, or any kind of research, right? It doesn't have to be backtesting, but if you're researching stocks, you know, you want to research all of the variables, all of the company statistics, all the people involved, and then make a decision on based on that. And then if you're going to be trading options and maybe look for options on those stocks. But um, yeah, I think that's what it comes down to is just like taking responsibility for the outcome. And I think, it's not, it's kind of not your fault because that's the way you were, most people are brought up. But um, it, now that you're aware of that, it's your responsibility to, to uh, you know, remedy that. So what, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think you brought up a couple of really good points. The thing about the schooling, I think is interesting. I have a friend and he, um, he, he like has his own business, right? And he'll hire um, kids like like you know like high school or whatever age kids mm. and he was telling me the other day he's a like a um health practitioner we'll say right like um physiotherapy and he does like basically when people have no one else to go to they go to him <laughs> as a last <laughs> resort right yeah so it's, he's kind of alternative not mainstream anyway he was telling me the other day he was like dude when i hire these kids who come from like the normal high schools they just want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. He said, but when I get the homeschool kids, it's like they're, you know what I mean? They, they kind of, they have more initiative. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting. He was, you know, he's saying it was really interesting, the difference between the two different groups. So I think you're right. I think like what you're saying about the schooling thing, it teaches us to be employees and to take direction. So if you think about school, it's like, here's this algebra problem. And I'm going to show you how to solve for the third variable. And if you think about this trader, it's like, here's this trading system. And I'll show you why it works, you know, mm -hmm. and all you really have to do is say, yep, raise your hand and go, okay, I'm in. And then, and then, and then use the formula. You know what I mean? It's kind of like how we're, we're built. The other interesting thing I want, I really wanted, oh, you were saying about the back testing, like, you know, about doing your homework and you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing before you, you jump into it. Basically I've got these mat. So I used to be a magician, right? And my, my, my mother's been sending me these, my old magic tricks. Because my son now, like he can, he's interested. He's not, he's not that interested. He's a little bit interested, right? In magic. He's not like I was. 
And so I'm showing him these tricks and stuff, right? When I was thinking what you were saying about, you know, doing your homework, I remember because I, I did these shows, I did magic shows when I was really young, right? And I remember how long I had to practice the trick and how well I had to have it down before it ever made it into in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. So like I was doing shows from like age seven to, you know, 22, right? That's kind of when I was doing my magic stuff. And I remember like being like eight years old, nine years old, whatever, in my room trying to get, you know, and it's, it's really more, a lot of times it's easy to do the trick. It's more about the talking about, you know what I mean? The it's called patter. They call it patter, the mm -hmm. patter that goes with the trick. You know what I mean? The a lot of times it was part. just, yeah, like kind of, kind of yeah. the story and everything. Yeah. So yeah. So it was really interesting. Like um, thinking about that when you were saying that, cause I, I felt, I feel the same way. Like I remember thinking just how much work went into before that like 35 second trick made it in front of it made it into the show you know what mm -hmm, i mean mm -hmm. and sometimes you just you just wouldn't like you just wouldn't do it you you wouldn't risk it i guess stand-up comedians have, have the same thing where they have like new new ideas for new bits and stuff and they might try them out here and there mm -hmm. you, you know you you have to have the right audience you have to know you know you have to be comfortable and you have to have it you know what i mean like you mm -hmm. really need to have it down before you do it. and it's the same with a uh, trading system like there's no way that a trading system is going to see live account date like li a live account like it's going to be plugged into a live account until it's gone through its paces right and so for me that's back testing and that's working out the statistics figuring out you know what kind of drawdowns are likely what kind of risk rules are going to be employed with this like you know how how aggressive am I going to get with it? And then it goes into a live account, right? Mm -hmm. And even then, it's a small live account, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got this system I started in November 2021, and you know it's it's done really well. But like, it still has ways to go. Like, it hasn't tripled the account yet. You know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. the goal is to triple the account before it moves into a bigger, graduates to a bigger account. So yeah, so it's just it's just a process. And I know, like, especially the other thing about this trader that's interesting is he quit his job. And he's really under the gun, you mm -hmm. know, to make profits now. That stress of like going, okay, because I've been there. I've done this, the, the logic in your head, which is, well, if I quit my job, I wouldn't miss out on all these trades, right? Or, or push, other, my, push my back to the wall and I'm going to be forced to be successful, right? That was my mentality yeah. back, back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, It's why we like celebrate. Um, I saw the other day. Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before I saw on YouTube, there was the professional disc golf association championships. <laughs> and, and, um, and if you got, you know, about disc golf, right. And it was in North Carolina and the, this guy, he made this shot. Like it was the, it was down to the last two or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And this dude, he, th he made like a hole in one or whatever you would call, it. I don't know, an ACE or whatever you call it. And he just went, Phew. And it was the coolest shot because it curved around these trees and everything went right in there. And the whole crowd goes wild, right? But we celebrate people who do really well under pressure like that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing to yourself. Like if you're not, if you're not able to consistently um, parallel that income, and then you all of a sudden go, okay, now I have to be, you know, ha I have to do that now. Like mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier if you have the confidence before you drop, you know, drop that consistent income so anyway it's 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 a tough thing um i think this trader is in a really t tough spot it's too bad that he w w wasn't able to um you know because like the like i said you know a lot of times what we do is we convince ourselves well you know if i was at home all the time i wouldn't miss these trades would be mm -hmm. different it, you know what i mean but but really the, th the biggest difference is that you're under the gun now you're under an incredible amount of pressure because you haven't done it yet Mm -hmm. um sad but true i mean that's the reality and then now you all of a sudden have to you have to do it and mm -hmm. um it's a lot better if you've already done it like if you've already m made that consistency and then you kind of wean yourself off the other mm -hmm. the other ones so i don't know it's tricky it's a very it's a very tricky thing but i think um you know slow slowly like building up confidence is i think the way to do it personally yeah, yeah. But, and yeah. you bring up a good point with the job like I think a lot of people have the mentality that either you have to get a job that's, you know, whatever you studied for, or you don't have a job at all. But I would also say uh -huh. that, you know, there's a third option, obviously, where 
you get a job which is like kind of brainless maybe you go work in a warehouse or something or you go um you know or go work retail or something like that right you don't have to take anything home with you you don't have to work long hours and you just get one or two of those part-time jobs and that will float you until you can figure out the trading thing and because the hardest part about or the reason why a lot of people want to quit their job is because they're taking work home with them they're working long yeah. hours right yeah. so if you can just supplement some of that then that will get you a long way to um becoming a better trader yeah that's that's the key because you're right you're that's that's a brilliant point because if you if you have the you know the job the high paying job the one that you were so called trained for at university or whatever and then all of a sudden you know, like you say, you, you, it's an, it's all consuming, right? So mm -hmm. there is, there is a real advantage to, yeah, to, to that approach of, of, of saying, okay, I'll take something at this level, but like I punch in, punch out. And, um, you know what I mean? Like that, that gives me three hours to, to look at the charts or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's a really, that's a really good point. People, yeah, people often don't consider that. In fact, in life, we don't consider that. We usually have the false, the false duality, right? It's either this or that. Yeah, but it's yeah. never, it's almost never that. And even in trading, you know, I have to catch myself too. It's like, well, it's either going to do this or that. No, actually, it could do like seventeen other things between this and that. It doesn't have to be just this and just that. That's uh, the false duality um, idea. And so, um, yeah, so that's that's a really good point. So I would, so that's something to think about. Like if you're 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 in that point where you you really want to do it you really 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 want to make the leap but you're not at the point where you're consistent maybe that's maybe that's the solution maybe step down get a get a more brainless job as you say <laughs> and then and then you then you can have one foot in both and you will you will, you that's good because you can set up the structure you go okay i'm going to work from 8 until 6 and then you know from 7 to 10 i've got this window there where i can you know, look at the chart, set up my trades, put my orders in or whatever. Yeah, that's a good good way to do it. And sometimes yeah. you get paid more. So, you know, don't uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Good point. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.